Hi, I'm Jaydeep and today we'll be looking at how to analyze composite structures in ANSYS Mechanical APDL. So the first step to analyze composites is we start with element type. In the preprocessor, go to element type, go to add and mostly all the composites uh, are analyzed using shell element because they give better analysis uh, not better faster analysis i would say uh, if you need detailed analysis you can uh, select solid elements or solid shell element as well but uh, for timing we'll go with shell element and these are the various shell elements available uh, you can go to help and select a uh, shell element that uh, you need to anal uh, that you think is suitable for you so we'll go with 4 node shell 181 click ok to uh, select the element then we'll go to options and storage of layer data will uh, store all the layers so that we'll be able to view them afterwards then for this particular uh, shell element 181 we don't need any real constants so the next step is defining material properties the material properties as you all know for uh, composite structures depend uh, on the direction of the fabric, direction of the reinforcement or nature of the reinforcement. If you have UD or if you are bidirectional, your properties will differ. If you have say chopped fiber disposed uh, fabric or chopped fiber uh, disposed or say uh, particle reinforced uh, composite, then your analysis will completely differ uh, because of material properties will be totally different. So today we'll be uh, looking at only UD uh, type of reinforcement that is unidirectional so define the properties uh, in material models uh, go to structural then linear elastic and orthotropic in orthotropic uh, this is some sample material that I'm using here uh, this these values may not actually reflect any uh, actual say uh, the real material uh, that is available right now but this is uh, some material say XYZ so these are values in GPA so uh, you can see that the value of EX is greater than EY and EZ both that indicates that it is a unidirectional fabric the Poisson's ratio I'm putting in and say the bulk modulus So now that we have defined all the properties, we'll input the density as 2200 kg per meter cube. Make sure that you are maintaining the same unit of system throughout your analysis. For all sorts of uh, units and dimensions, make sure that you are maintaining the units. The second material uh, that we'll analyze would be our normal steel. So it, it is uh, an isotropic material with 200 GPA as Young's modulus and 0.3 poison ratio and density as 7800 kg per meter cube so we have defined the materials now we'll go to the sections section will decide how your uh, plate or how your object will behave under loads and uh, different different conditions so we have shell section so we have to lay up the section that is how the pla planes of different fabrics or different materials are stacked one above the other so to add go to lay up and add and let us suppose we have three layers each layer of 1 mm 0 0.001 0 0.001 0 0.001 the middle layer we have is of steel so we'll select 2 here and let us say if we have top layer of orientation 90 degrees okay and now we have done with this section now we go to modeling now we are going to create areas so I go to modeling areas rectangle and by dimension if I want to create the area of this say suppose dialog box then you have to enter the first point as the coordinates of the bottom most left most corner point and the second coordinate is of the right most top corner so if we have a plate of say 40 by 40 centimeters or 400 by 400 mm this is how your coordinates will look like and click on OK to obtain the areas the next part after modeling is meshing so go to mesh tool if you don't want to select uh, attributes of all the parts say uh, seeding etc individually just go to mesh tool and click on mesh pick all 
and your meshing is done. If you want a finer mesh, you can do the mesh refinement from the same tool. Click at refine at nodes. Oh, sorry. Click on refine at nodes. Pick all. That will pick all the nodes and uh, select the level of uh, refinement that you want. For now, I'll, I'm choosing say level two and click on OK. So you get a finer mesh. You can now uh, pan with control and left click and rotate by control and right click. To see all of your layers stacked up, all you have to do is go to plot controls, go to style, go to size and shape. And here you have to click on display of elements on and OK. So now you can see your three layers, each of one mm stacked one above the other. Once you are done, what we have to do is, uh, the next step is, uh, we have defined uh, the mesh, we have defined the model or the properties of the section. The next is, defining the analysis. For that you have to go to solution, analysis type, new analysis and static analysis. Now uh, we will fix uh, say left edge and right edge and to do that we have to go into define loads. Click on apply structural displacements and we will apply on lines so I will select now I have to rotate this and I will select this edge and I will also select this edge and click OK all degrees of freedom and the value would be 0 apply so now you can see that your two lines are fixed to apply forces you go to apply force moment and say on key key points or nodes key points are these four key points and nodes are the intersections here so you can define the loads as uh, you want say i apply a load over here at this point i click ok and say the load is acting in uh, z direction and has a magnet of minus thousand newton so now you can see that the load has been applied over here and we are done we have constrained the motion we have defined the load and all we have to do is solve so you have to go into solve and current load step click on ok so it will show you some dialog box and solution is done so now we go to post processor and in post processor go to plot results contour plot nodal solution and let us see say displacement vector sum that will give you the total deformation and here you can see the total deformation to see if your plate has failed in shear you have to go to stress sorry stress and go to xy shear stress and you can clearly see over here that in between two plates the plate has sheared you can see over here that the shear stress is maximum at here and minimum at here so that indicates that your layers are going to move relative to each other and going to fail in shear failure and this can be uh, attributed to interlaminar shear stresses you can see the same stresses over here as well so uh, you can try different combinations of the forces and uh, i hope i've made it clear so thank you all